Joining us is the coach, Ted Tolner. Coach, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mark <laughs> and Bruce. How are you guys doing? Well, you know, when you're a retired coach, you know, you're on the golf course most of the time, so that's probably where you, you have been fact, all day. Where are you right now, Coach? Well, I just finished playing, and I started in the morning, but as, as bad as I played, it is afternoon now. It takes me a while to get all my strokes in. All right, Coach. Well, let's talk. Uh, let's start with the Poinsettia Bowl. Uh, we're, uh, th- that game is December the 23rd at Qualcomm Stadium, and it features a team from the Mountain West Conference against a bowl-eligible United States Naval Academy. So let's <laughs> let's go right to that. Uh, we kind of figured Navy, after seven games, would be, I, my estimate was maybe five and two. Uh, the Naval Academy, three and four. Now, they've got to get to six wins to become bowl-eligible and play in the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl. Your early take, what's going on with Navy? Well, I, this is a big game for them right now. Coming up with San Jose State this week, I mean, it, it's one that they really need to have uh, against a Mountain West opponent, and they've struggled. You know, they, they beat VMI last last week, but they've been struggling. I think they're a better football team than their record, but they, they've run out of time now because that after San Jose, they've got Notre Dame, which is going to be very difficult for them. So they've got to beat San Jose and then the combination of Georgia Southern and South Alabama prior to the Army game are critical. But I'd say right now San Jose is really, really important for them to win for this to work in their favor. And by the way, Navy has a bye this week, so luckily that game won't be until October uh, the 25th. But, Coach, right. as, a, as, as, as not only a head coach, you've been a quarterback's coach. And, and I've noticed that uh, Keenan Reynolds, the Navy uh, starting quarterback, He's he's been hurt a little bit this year, but he's also just been a little bit off. With that Navy offense, uh, the quarterback I would think is critical to their success. Oh, very much so. I mean, anytime your quarterback, I mean, everybody thinks the quarterback's major role is the passing game, and that's true. But for Navy, the run game is critical. His role in the run game and making decisions on the run when they're running option stuff is it, it, just critical. So he. He has a key role, both run game and pass game, and you can't be off just a little bit when you're that much of a, of a center figure on how your offense is going to perform. And, uh, Coach, now the Naval Academy, if they become bowl eligible, will face a team from the Mountain West. And right now, looking at the Aztecs, they're 3-3, three and 1-2, three, and two, or 2-1 two and one in conference. They're right in the thick of it. How do you think they're going to pan out the rest of the way? Well, I, I think it looks good for them. I mean, they're a good football team. They're, they're better than their record. But the way I see the Mountain West right now, there is no dominant team like Fresno State was a year ago. And so, uh, you know, you could, you better be ready every week because there are four or five schools in the conference right now that any of them could end up winning it, and any of them could be in the, in the playoffs at the end. So uh, and San Diego State is, is one of those schools because I truly believe that they are better than what their record is right now, and, and they're going to have to get a run going now. If they beat New Mexico last week and they've – They've got, to, they've got to get a run going now to, to, to get to seven, eight. Even nine wins are still capable for them, but I think very realistic to get to eight. You're listening to Bowl Game Radio on the Mighty 1090. Joining us is uh, Coach Ted Toner. He was the head coach at the San Diego State USC. In fact, Coach, you coached about everywhere in the country in your long and illustrious career. Uh, but this has been a crazy year in the Mountain West. Now, we talked about the Aztecs, but they lose to Fresno State. Fresno State loses to UNLV. Wyoming beats Air Force. Air Force beats Navy, and then Wyoming loses to Hawaii. What's going on in the Mountain West Conference? Well, I just, I don't think there's any surprises there. That they're even. I mean, there is no dominant team, and the teams that you think of as being the lesser ones, like in the past, Hawaii and UNLV, they are improved, and they can beat you if you're not ready to play. The top teams are notched down, at least to this point, without being a dominant team. So that it makes every week exciting, and you have an opportunity to win. And at this point, nobody has really shined that's going to take that thing over. And, and that's, that's good in many ways. Now, those of us in the bowl business, you know, we like to see people surface that are going to be the dominant team. But, but that hasn't happened yet, and that's exciting, too. Well, Coach, now let's jump over to the National University Holiday Bowl. And this is an exciting year for the bowl game, as you well know. We are now, we're going to have the same pick that we've had out of the Pac-12, which has always been a, a, a good spot for us. Now we're no longer with the Big 12. We are now getting a top-tier pick from the Big 10. So it's the Big 10 and the Pac-12. What do you think that matchup's going to do for us? Well, I think it's going to be tremendous. Because I, I really, 
you know, my my stint at USC, I got a feel for what the the the, the Rose Bowl the way it used to be when it was Pac-10 and Big Ten every year. I mean, there's great fan bases from the from the Big Ten, and and so I just think the West Coast fan. I mean, the whole West Coast, not just California. They really relate to those two conferences, and now we're going to have a top tiered team from each of those. And I think it's going to spill over in the enthusiasm, regardless of who it is. And and right now, I mean, we all know that there's 14 teams in the Big Ten, not 10. So uh, there's a there, there's really again a chance to have an outstanding program come in here uh, after the the first couple go to whatever bowl games they're going to go to, because there's a number of teams, you know, in the Big Ten now with, with really good records. And as they start playing each other, they're going to knock each other off. But the main thing I think is that people on the West Coast relate to Pac-10 or, or Pac-12 now, Big Ten football, because of all the history of the Rose Bowl. And now we fit that role right now, but well, that's going to be the next six years. And I think that's really special. You know what I think is a, an interesting note also, Coach, is the Rose Bowl has always had the Big Ten and the Pac-12 uh, champions in their game. Well, this year they're a semifinal game. So yeah. they're not necessarily going to have the Pac-12 in the Big Ten. We are. So we're really going to have the highest-rated Pac-12 and Big Ten teams. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing about it is at this point there's a number of teams in that mix, but again, the base of, of fan interest in the Big Ten and the Pac-12 is outstanding. So whoever we get, it should be really a great game. You're listening to Bowl Game Radio. I'm Bruce Binkowski along with Mark Neville. And joining us every week at about this time is the As coach, soon as he gets off the golf course. Uh, yes, yeah. is, is, is the coach, Ted Tolner, <laughs> talking about the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl and the National University Holiday Bowl. Coach, uh, to the Pac-12 back again for a second. Um, looking at the offense in this conference, uh, Oregon is scoring 30, 40 points a game. Arizona, Arizona State, Cal uh, beat Washington State 60 to 59. There are just amazing number of high-scoring games. Is it great offenses or bad defenses? Well, I, I think it's the the offenses are outstanding, and there's so many of them now. There, it's more of a wide open game. You don't see as much of that two back set as a lot of one back, no back, spread them out throw the ball, and there's some really talented quarterbacks. I think Marcus Mariota at, at Oregon is, is as fine an athlete as there is in the country, but all of them have that, and, and the thing about it is that the bottom teams in the Pac-12 last year, if you take Cal and you take Utah, and Washington State was down there a little bit, and Colorado, they're all improved, and I don't think at the top end that Oregon is quite as dominant. That's why you see a loss for everybody. I mean, there's there's six really good teams that can score points and for the most part they're wide open no huddle attacks and that that gets more plays in the game which obviously relates to more points and then the emphasis on the passing game and that that whole thing is just it's, it makes for exciting football and it makes it very difficult on defense to be able to to really play a physical game because it's so oriented toward the pass coach so the SEC gets a lot it gets lauded as the greatest conference in, in college football the Pac-12 might be there. What do you think? Well, I, I think if you look at the rated teams right now, they both in the top, in the first 10 teams, those two conferences dominate that. I mean, they, they've they got teams in that thing now with, uh, but all of a sudden in, in, in the SEC, Mississippi, Mississippi State jumps up. You never expect them to jump up like that. You're thinking of the other teams. I, I think it's very competitive between the two. But the Southeast Conference, you have to give them their respect. It's a, it is a tremendous conference. I think this year that the Pac-12 has got the best balance it's had in years of quality teams also. So to say one's better than the other, I think they're just both outstanding football conferences. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for joining us uh, off the golf course. And uh, we'll be talking to you this time next week. Way too early for any predictions at this point in time, but I think we're going to have some interesting discussions as we move forward during this bowl season to finally see who ends up in both of our bowl games. Thanks for joining I us today. I look forward to it. I tell you guys, picking teams right now who's going to be in any bowl would be almost impossible because it's wide open and exciting. It really is, and uh, we will be looking forward to a lot of great conversations moving forward. Coach Ted Tolner joining us here on Bowl Game Radio.